I don't know if you're going to suffer some form of loss in your life, but I hope that these following notes will be helpful for you on how to cope with loss in your life. One that you have to understand when you shed tears over a loss in your life is that there is a heaven for the departed loved ones. So that is a great source of comfort that lost people don't even have that you should cling on to. Let's look at 2 Samuel chapter 12. Notice that King David said that even though his baby passed away, he said that he knows that he'll be in heaven with the child. Verse 22, and he said, while the child was yet alive, I fasted and wept. For I said, who can tell whether God will be gracious to me that the child may live? But now he is dead. Wherefore should I fast? Can I bring him back again? I shall go to him, but he shall not return to me. So he believes that there is an afterlife where he can meet his child. For us today, we know it to be heaven. Heaven. That's why David brought up a good point. Why should I weep and mourn? Why should I weep and mourn? Especially if your loved one was suffering pain for many years or bad conditions for many years, heaven would be a much better mercy for the, for the person. Let that comfort you. <clears throat> Another one is very interesting is intimacy. Intimacy. Basically, if you find new love. See, you're concentrating on your old love. Did you notice that? You're concentrating on your old love with that loss that the best thing to cope with that is where God gives you new love in your life that fills in that bleak void. Look at 2 Samuel 12, 24. And David, what? Comforted Bathsheba, his wife, and went in unto her and lay with her, and she bare a son. And he called his name Solomon, and the Lord loved him. Look at Genesis chapter 24. Genesis chapter 24. This proves the same thing with Isaac after he lost his mother, Sarah. And when God sent new love into his life through Rebekah, he was comforted. Look at Genesis chapter 24, and then we'll read verse 67. Genesis chapter 24, and then we'll read verse 27. The Bible reads over here, uh, 67, excuse me, I said 27, 67. And Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent and took Rebekah, and she became his wife. And he loved her, and Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. The third thing is look at the current love God has given to you. Look at 2 Samuel again. Go to 2 Samuel again. We're going to look at chapter 19, chapter 19. You know, the, here's the sad thing you got to realize. So, some mothers might grieve after the loss of their husband, but if you focus so much on the grief of your husband, what about your current love, your children that you're affecting? You got to understand that what's going to help you comfort your loss is to focus on the current love that you have. If you're so stuck to the old love in your life, then you're, you're not just going to lose your old love, you're going to lose your current love. And sadly, sadly, one day, even your new love God will send to you in your life. That's not going to fill in the void. So you don't want that. So look at the book of 2 Samuel chapter 19. Look what David did. Verse 1, And it was told Joab, Behold, the king weepeth and mourneth for Absalom. And the victory that day was turned into mourning unto all the people. For the people heard say that day how the king was grieved for his son. So it's, it's King David's grief affected his whole people, his entire kingdom. Look at verse 4. But the king covered his face and the king cried with a loud voice, O my son Absalom, O Absalom, my son, my son. And Joab came into the house to the king and said, Thou hast shamed this day the faces of all thy servants which this day have saved thy lives. Verse 6, in that thou lovest thine enemies and hatest thy friends. Look, there is a time of weeping, we understand. Go to Romans 15. Go to Romans 15. However, you've got to realize that this weeping cannot 
negatively affect your current love. You can go that far. And you know what's going to happen? It's going to turn to frustration to your current love. Even anger, which is sad. Even anger. What if children's lives were negatively affected because they lost their lover's mo love for 10 to 15 years because the mother kept concentrating on the loss of her old love? Then the children, a lot of children grow up bitter and mad at their parents, you got to understand. They're very tender and precious, so you got to be careful of that. All right. Now, the next one is the Word of God. So, how much often do you listen to the preaching? How often do you go to church? That's why going to church is important, not staying at home and keep on grieving. You want to hear the Scriptures, Bible teaching that could probably minister to you. Most importantly, you got the Word of God in your hands that you need to read. Do you quote Scripture during your time of grief? During that thought of grief that pops in your head, you should quote the Word of God at the same time while you're feeling the grief. Then it'll comfort. Romans 15, 4, For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the what? Scriptures might have hope. Go to Psalms chapter 30. Psalms chapter 30. I hope that this is helping you. Or if it's not now, then in the future. In the future one day it will help you. Now, a lot of people hate to hear this part, but this is actually very, very true. Time heals. It takes time. Weeping is normal. Can I give you that much of a relief? Weeping is normal. Go ahead and cry. Go ahead and be in grief. But it won't last forever. Because the body is fresh with grief of the fresh incident and the tragedy that happened. But your mind and body will get used to that because it constantly keeps thinking. It constantly keeps weeping and grieving. So finally, after much time, that it'll, it will go away. It will go away. Sometimes it'll pop out here and there even 10 years later, right? right. But it doesn't go 24-7 on forever. Amen. Look at Psalms chapter 30, verse 5. The Bible says over here, For his anger endureth but, for a, but a moment, and his favor is life. Weeping may what? Endure. See, it endures. It lasts for a long time, it feels like. But the Bible nevertheless says, For a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Go to Job chapter 1. Job chapter 1. Here's the most eye-opening thing that you're going to hear. God's ways are better than your ways. That's the... Sixth one that I want to show you. God's ways are better than your ways. So no matter what tragedy hits, His way will be better than your way. Well, no. God shouldn't have taken my loved one away. Well, let me give you a true story here. True story is that a long time ago, this mother begged for God to heal her daughter. But then there was no healing. So then she got mad. And because she got mad, she told she became a little bit bitter to the Lord. When she got bitter and angry at God, you know what God did? He healed her daughter. But what happened after that was that her daughter became messed up in sin and in wickedness and lived her life not serving the Lord ever. And then the mother, she actually said this to the pastor. She actually mentioned that it would have been better the Lord took her home early at heaven where she was pure and right and not giving grief to the family rather than surviving and now being a detrimental pain to the family and burden and causing new grief. See? So, you gotta understand this. God's ways are better. He has a good reason for that. Because, as I've challenged you many times in my sermons, if you get bitter and mad at God, then just, then, wh then why not pray to God, do everything what I want to do things. Can you dare to do that? Or do you not dare to do that because you're afraid that whatever you might tell God what to do will turn out to be bad or worse? That's why loss is important that it happened. Otherwise, it could have been worse for you maybe. That's why Job chapter 1 verse 20, the Bible says here, Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped. Remember, he lost ten children in a row. That's a lot of grief and loss. But he said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. 
The Lord gave and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Go to John chapter 14. John chapter 14. Now I know that a lot of you might keep trying to comfort and heal the person, but many times you can't. Many times you can't. So the only answer is just leave it to God. Just let it go. You can't comfort the person. You got to let the comforter comfort the person. All you can do is just pray. Let it go. That's hard to do, but just let it go and let the person cry because that person's in God's hands now to comfort that person's grief. There's not much you can do after that. John chapter 14, verse 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. Verse 27. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. All of us living in this world can't give that peace compared to the true Prince of Peace, the true Comforter. Leave, leave it alone, let him handle it. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. One thing I learned is this, whatever tragedy or loss happens, all you can do is just, you can't do anything about it. And that's perfectly in the right direction you're going. Because God's, God should be the one operating, working, not your own working. Everything we do would just make things worse, wouldn't it? Genesis chapter 37. Genesis chapter 37. Of course, I'm not condemning people trying to comfort or better the situation. We should because we should carry one another's burdens, as the Bible says. However, you can't let it take over as the complete peace and comfort. You've got to let it alone let God handle it. Yeah. Genesis chapter 37, verse 34. You know why people keep being in grief? This is very eye-opening. It's what you truly desire, your preference. You know one thing I've learned, which is pretty difficult to hear, but this might be very eye-opening and helpful to you. The reason why nothing in this world will make you happy, no matter how much scripture or how many things that the Lord provides to help you with, you, the reason why you're still in sorrow and grief is not because it's uh, God's ways are weak, it's because you prefer to be sad. When happiness is given to you and offered to you, you reject it because you don't want to be happy. You want to be sad. You want to keep crying. Look at Genesis chapter 37, verse 34. And Jacob rent his clothes and put sackcloth upon his loins and mourned for his son many days. Verse 35, and all his sons and all his daughters rose up to comfort him. But look at the wording of your King James Bible. But he what? Refused to be comforted. That's why. It all comes down to the power of choice. Do you realize that? Everything comes from the power of choice. What do you choose to be? Happy or sad? Ah, All right, let's look at Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9. Uh, let me know if I'm out of bounds. I think I might be. Just, All right. The most comforting thing that can help you tremendously is that God is exactly feeling the grief that you're feeling. Didn't you know that? How can God understand He didn't suffer the exact same thing that I did? Well, He suffered the loss of His son at Calvary. Yes. But even deeper than that, the Lord continues to let the grief flow, and He feels it currently right now that you're feeling. You know that? You might say, why? Because you're a part of His body. So whatever harm you feel, God's going to feel it. Look at Acts chapter 9, verse 4. When the Christians were persecuted by Saul, Jesus said he felt the same persecution. The Bible says, Acts chapter 9, verse 4, And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why per persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. Go to Revelation chapter 21. Revelation chapter 21. And thank you so much for your patience. We're actually going to close it for the night here. This is our last verse. Revelation chapter 21. 
So remember this, it's comforting to know that when you're crying, that God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit is act are actually crying alongside you. You might say, really? John 11, 35, Jesus wept when all the people wept over the death of Lazarus. Why? Because they have to feel the same thing you're feeling in the pain and the grief. Isn't it a comfort to know that when you're crying or when you're in pain, that God is groaning along with you, alongside you? See, God understands. Revelation chapter 21 and verse 4. The comforting thought is it's, it will all be over one day. It will pass away. That's the greatest comfort that this pain you're feeling right now, this loss you're feeling, know this. You will never, ever feel it again one day. Revelation chapter 21 verse 4. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Just tell yourself this, when the devil attacks you with overt grief that is affecting negatively your happiness and your life, tell yourself this while you're crying. This crying, these tears that are coming out, it will be gone one day. Yes. This grief that I'm feeling, it will be gone one day. It will be over one day.